Hello, good evening everybody and welcome to another De Montfort University live stream here. Tonight we are joined by students or and more accurately graduates from the Health and Life Sciences faculty. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking a little bit about where our graduates have gone on once they finish their degree with us and just kind of exploring some of their career opportunities and the opportunities that they had whilst they were students at DMU that helped set them up for uh, their for sort of future careers and the things that they have been doing since they left us. Um, it's going to be a really good opportunity if you do want to get involved, ask lots of questions and just again another opportunity for you to find out more about what De Montfort University has to offer and again some of those options for students that decide to jump onto some of the degrees that we offer we'll find out what our guests uh, actually studied at DMU so you'll be able to kind of see where those paths could take you if you are thinking of studying any of those particular courses with us and like I say if you are interested in joining the discussion this evening you can use the comments tab you'll be able to pop some comments pop some questions um, and we'll try and answer them either throughout or we'll do a little bit of a Q&A at the end. Now, my name is Ben. I work as part of the market, marketing team at uh, DMU. Um, you've probably seen me in one or two of these live streams now. We're doing quite a lot of these to kind of support students and poor applicants um, during this very strange time of the year. Um, and we're also doing these sessions as part of the sort of UCAS extension. So as you may or may not be aware, the traditional UCAS deadline is in Jan January. That has been extended to the uh, 29th um, at 6 p.m. So if you are thinking of applying to university, you've got a little bit of extra time to actually get your application in, particularly if you're at the stage where you're not 100% sure what you want to do in the future. You've got a little bit of extra time to do that research. And again, this live stream will hopefully help support that and answer a few of those questions. So let's start with a couple of introductions. First of all, I'm going to go over to Hannah. Hannah, tell us about yourself. Hi, so yeah, my name is Hannah and I graduated at DMU last summer, so in 2020, um, and I studied criminology with psychology and now I'm doing a full-time master's in psychology as well as a psychology teacher. Amazing. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to, again, just finding out a little bit more about that and some of the things that you got up to whilst you were a stu student at DMU. We were also joined this evening by Ramesa. So Ramesa, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Ramesa. So I'm a graduate of um, Health and Wellbeing in Society. Um, so after I graduated, I managed to secure myself a job in Leicester City Council, and I'm currently working as a children's health promoter. Amazing. So as you can see, there are two obviously very sort of health related, science related uh, courses that we obviously offer here at DMU. And these guys have gone on to graduate uh, and actually work in those fields that hopefully, again, you will find very, very interesting as we explore those further throughout this live stream. Now, as I'm sure you guys will agree this evening, um, that leaving university and entering that world of work is uh, it's quite scary. It's a huge step. And I imagine it's not something that many of our viewers, if they are thinking of going to university, have maybe even thought about at this stage. You know, we're thinking kind of one step ahead. This is very much sort of several steps ahead for, um, I imagine, some of our guests that are watching. So what we want to do is just kind of highlight, as I said at the beginning, the sort of opportunities that university can provide and how those degrees supported you in kind of getting to where you are now. So what we're going to start off with is um, sort of looking at how that kind of degree supported you in that transition to becoming a graduate. So maybe if we start with Ramesa, uh, actually discussing kind of the opportunities and the things that you did as part of your degree. Yep, so um, I actually managed to get involved in lots of different things at university. I was a social butterfly and liked to get involved with everything that there was. Um, so the brilliant thing about DMU is that they have um, like a volunteering organisation. And here you're able to volunteer with lots of different things. And I think that really brought out my experiences. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that I, was, I managed to do was get involved and help in food banks. I was also able to help um, with children. So they'd come in and do some of their maths homework with us. And it was helping them and gaining that experience whilst also having a little bit of fun as well. Mm -hmm. um, I also took part in some DMU global activities. So I went to Berlin and I was able to volunteer with um, some refugee camps, have a little bit of fun, um, meet new people. And it was a great experience because I've never been on holiday without um, my family and mm. it just really brought me out of my shell out of my comfort zone and I would really really 
um, promote this and tell mm -hmm. people go for it if you're able to. Of course, the situation is slightly mm -hmm. different right now, mm -hmm. um, but let's hope that when you do start university in a few years down the line, that you will be able to get involved with this. Um, and also, of course, within my course, there were lots and lots of um, opportunities. So we also had a placement module built into our course, and here I was also able to do. Um, I was also able to work with an organisation. So one of them was NHS, mm -hmm. and here I was able to put everything that I learned in all my modules into practice, and that also really, really helped me to secure the job that I have now. Amazing. I think there's a couple of things that we can sort of pull from that, you know, obviously touching on the global thing, Hannah, and, and, and I imagine you've got a few things to kind of talk around similar sort of topics. Obviously, DMU Global is absolutely fantastic for students to be able to uh, obviously jump into other countries, explore different things, explore new cultures, um, and obviously explore certain career aspects within those other cultures. So that's brilliant. And like you say, we hope that students when uh, they arrive at university in September, they can obviously explore similar opportunities at that stage you know fingers crossed everything's kind of back to normal at that stage um obviously the volunteer work is absolutely brilliant and again i know um what i imagine hannah you've got some things similar things around that so absolutely fantastic and you can kind of again really kind of see the links from your your current role now that you've graduated in some of the things that you did were there certain skills that you felt that you could take from those volunteering opportunities into that degree that you into that career sorry that you sort of you've been aware of um, yeah, so a lot of it. So um, within the placement, I done I was project managing. Um, mm -hmm. So a project, and it was on employees' health and well-being. So I had to manage that whole product and sort of um, bring out a product that employees could use to mm -hmm. improve their health and well-being. And literally everything that I done there, I was able to transfer straight into my new job. Um, and right now, I'm managing something called an oral health supervising um, scheme. So this mm -hmm. is where children are supervised with toothbrushing and I literally managed this whole scheme and that's exactly what I was doing on my placement. And I think that really helped me to secure my job. Cool, I think that's brilliant. Um, and talking kind of project management skills, I mean, that's a very kind of transferable skill, learning sort of communication skills, interpersonal skills, organization project management skills. They can come from a variety of different things, maybe not always necessarily that related um, to, to actually what you're studying. And that kind of seems quite nicely into actually jumping over to Hannah, because I know some of the things that you got up to at university. So Hannah, what, what did your kind of degree and, and the university opportunities that you had that have helped you transition into, into your career? Well, to be honest, uh, when I first started university, going into teaching was not anything that I was planning to do at all. Mm -hmm. um, originally, it was going into the police. But um, after uh, a while and trying out different volunteering, I was like, maybe it's not for me. Maybe I should try different avenues. So um, after I graduated, I was kind of looking for part time jobs during um uh my during my masters mm -hmm. and um i found teaching and i was like oh okay um and i don't have a teaching degree um but i still applied because the worst they can say is no and got to it got an interview um and i felt it went really well and they offered me the job and i genuinely think it's because of all the transferable skill i learned while at university so um obviously do doing a psychology Part psychology degree was really really useful obviously to teach psychology so there we go that's that part of it but um also during dmu i was a part of many societies and um, i was a part of demon media um i was part of their management team for the student radio demon fm mm. um i was a part of the music society um and i was also in my final year chair of the ambassador society as well which i've tried to represent <laughs> on the stream tonight and I was also a course rep as well which I've tried to represent over there um, and that was when I kind of improved my organizational skills my leadership skills my communication skills by feeding back um, different viewpoints about the course what could be improved what really works feeding that back to the lecturers um, uh, so that we can have a more enjoyable student experience so that the students and the lecturers could work as a team um, and I guess that part of it really helped with my teaching job as well, because now I know what it's like to be one side. Uh, so as a student, but I also know what it's like to be 
a teacher and a lecturer as well. Um, so yeah, I really put down all of the experiences that I learned at DMU. I really am so grateful for all the kind of things you can get involved in. And mm -hmm. it's all online now. Um, so it isn't quite the same, but you can still get those transferable skills. You can still meet new people, leadership, organization. And then as soon as we're allowed to, um, we can enjoy things like DMU Global um, like the, um, and the volunteering stuff that was mentioned. So it's really mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah, I think that's really good. Something that, that um, I'm aware of with something like this sort of psychology degree is it's it's very much kind of research focused. There's quite a lot of sort of, again, it's, it's that kind of project management aspect to it. And did, did you find there was quite a lot of that with the, with the course? Is that a skill that you've been able to utilize in, in, in moving into your career? Yeah, certainly with the single honor psychology, you do have to have really good project management skills. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you develop that throughout the course. Um, uh, and even for uh, my course, which was a joint criminology with psychology, you mm -hmm. still have those organisational skills in order to, um, you know, meet deadlines. And then in your final year, you do your dissertation, which is completely your own project. Mm -hmm. So you will have those skills by that point to be able to do that big project, that 10,000 word document that um, you will always be yours. And um, I've used that dissertation in my teaching. So uh, it's something I'm really proud of and something you can take away from your degree, as well as all the amazing experiences that you, you do while doing your degree. Yeah, absolutely. Um I think what we'll do is we'll come back on to some of your sort of society stuff a little bit later if we've got a, a bit more time because actually there's something that I do my sort of next question and I'm going to start with Hannah here is because you've already mentioned it a little bit is is sort of career intentions when you started university so you you mentioned about potentially wanting to to go into the police when you started what was that the reason you chose to do criminology initially was that you're interested in the police and can you maybe spare a little bit more detail about maybe why you changed and, and where this has kind of led you into what you want to do now yeah so um yeah wanting to go into the police was like the reason that I chose criminology with psychology mm -hmm. uh, I would have done single honors um, and just in criminology but psychology there was always kind of a passion there so I thought you know what do uh joint honors uh, so then that kind of opens more doors for me in case I change my mind and I'm still doing something I'm really passionate about. I don't have to say goodbye to that subject. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a few volunteering placements with the police. Um, and then after a while, I was kind of like, I, I am kind of swaying to, towards psychology a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and that's absolutely OK. Um, and you, you can change your career plans as much as you want. Um, you don't have to have a plan as when you start university. Um, you don't really have to have a plan when you end university. Um, just as long as you're getting all of that experience and you're learning and you're having fun, um, that's the main thing because you will get there eventually. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my probably top tip for choosing a course is just to make sure if you don't have a career intention, just to make sure it's something that you're really passionate about and you really love because then you'll get the grades and the experience that you need to go on to something in the future mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a, a really lovely sentiment I think you're correct you know you don't always have to have that sort of uh, 10 15 year sort of life plan in setting your head and I think you know if you've got something that you are initially very sort of passionate about that's a really good sort of guide but you may find that that leads you somewhere else so I think that's absolutely fantastic. Sort of, Ramesa, what was your your sort of plan then when you chose what course you studied and, and you were going into university? What did that look like and, and how has that perhaps changed? Yeah, so um, at college, I really, really enjoyed sociology. Mm -hmm. um, and I really enjoyed this and it was, it was great to learn about society and how society works. Um, so when I saw this course, it was literally perfect because it had that little bit of sociology in it, as well as more broadly how society works mm -hmm. with that health aspect as well. And I thought from this, I'll be able to go down many different routes because I really did not know what I wanted to do um, after, after college. So yeah. as I was going through my degree, Every single module is like, yep, that is it. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to go down. The next module comes along, the exact same thing. 
and I don't think I ever really knew what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why during our placement module, I chose two placements. So they were quite different things. Um, and still, I still did not know what I wanted to do. And mm-hmm. um, so following university, when I graduated, um, I was going through job searching, maybe something just part time, something just for now. And then I came across this job and I read it and it was just me. And I knew that I'd enjoy it. I knew that it was a good organization and I knew that there were many um, promotional aspects from here. Mm -hmm. So this is um, a temporary job. So it was one year Mm -hmm. um, and that's been extended for six months. But I know that from here I have gained a whole range of experience within the within Leicester City Council yeah. and from there hopefully I'll be able to go on and do other things because I still don't know what I want to do as Hannah was saying yeah and it like I say there is absolutely nothing wrong with that I mean I'm uh I was going to say I'm 27 now and I've still got no idea uh but that made me really upset that I said that out loud so um you know it's, it's absolutely fine to have, obviously not have that plan but I think again what's really important something that both of you have just highlighted is absolutely you know developing those skills being in that industry being able to kind of flesh those kind of ideas out or learning out or develop those skills you know there's a lot of places that you could take certain things from there to go into other other things and when you start to find things you're interested in Hannah great example there is is you can take that further you can focus that down you can look at ways that maybe it does tie back into your degree a little bit more later on perhaps you know you've got that option to kind of reopen certain doors for yourself later on so I think that's absolutely brilliant Um, I want to touch on uh, placements just really quickly because we had a question come through Uh, so with a placement do you get to choose where you go or is it guided by the university. Um, Ramesa, again, you did a a placement. Is this something you can sort of advise on a little bit? Yep, so um, with our course, this was the first year that placements were introduced. So we had a whole list of the different placements that we could look at and explore further. So one of my placements was from that list and that was guided by university, guided by my placement tutor. Um, However, my other one, I found it myself with within the NHS organisation because I thought it'd be great to go into the NHS, um, an esteemed organisation and somewhere that I can learn lots and lots of skills. Mm -hmm. So it really depends what you want to do. If you know exactly where you want to go and you have an organisation in mind, then the university will help you through to secure that placement. But if you know sort of what you want to do but you don't know which organization then similarly the university will be able to guide you and maybe suggest um, a few different organizations that you can choose as your placement. Mm -hmm. Brilliant I think placements are a fantastic opportunity that like many things with university you won't necessarily always get once you've sort of finished or through something like college it does offer you quite a lot of sort of unique opportunities through uh, through the university directly and the placement team as well um, even if you are kind of sourcing your own work or sourcing your own even just a summer placement if you don't want to take that year out um, they will offer sort of CV writing interview support they'll look at cover letters they'll kind of help you out with certain aspects of that so the placement teams the careers teams at the university are absolutely brilliant um, for that sort of thing and and we'll give you that kind of support that you need to get you where you need to go so that's always absolutely fantastic so let's talk a little bit more about what you guys are doing at the minute and obviously this is going to look possibly slightly different from a normal day-to-day um when we're you know outside of working from home um but what is a typical week like for you hannah as a a teacher what is it sort of like for you actually in industry doing these sort of things day to day um busy (laughs) um at the moment obviously as you said everything is really different um so keeping up with different changes in the education system because things in education at the moment is changing daily Mm -hmm. um so trying to keep up with everything um i do teach part-time so when i am teaching i'll be doing uh lessons on a conferencing software and then um i will probably get on with some marking answer some emails Um, Just trying to keep everything as normal as possible. So uh, making sure that people are still getting the support they need, um, understanding feedback, things like that. Um, And 
I also find it's really, really important to keep in touch with people that work with you as well. So my colleagues, so on WhatsApp or on Teams or any kind of messaging software to kind of keep in touch with them and, you know, stay as close for community as you possibly can. Um, so, yeah, it changes daily. Um, it, there isn't really a typical day in teaching. <laughs> different things come up all the time um, and that keeps it fresh and new and exciting. Mm -hmm. Did you have an opportunity to teach prior to COVID? I was trying to work out when you sort of started is, or has it all been online for yourself? So I started in September. So yeah, I have had opportunity to uh, have face-to-face -face teaching. So I have seen my students in the flesh before, which actually mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did kind of have a little bit of experience through DMU. Mm -hmm. um, Supporting students so as a student ambassador it was something I do regularly supporting students throughout the sessions that DMU used to put on about you know how uh, how university works how to apply so um, having that experience working with them and kind of listening to them um, really really helps mm -hmm. um, so yeah I have had kind of a little bit of real teacher experience like real life face to face um but yeah adjusting to online learning in the last few weeks has been an experience but mm. i think the silver lining in all of this is that we become more adaptable um mm. as individuals um learning how to adapt to say online learning for example so quickly because we weren't expecting to teach online at the start of this year mm -hmm. um learning how to adapt to that quickly, we can take that transferable skill on forever. And I think everybody right now can do that because we're all learning to adapt so quickly. Um, and that is a really invaluable skill in the workplace, I think. Yeah, I think so. And like that's that's why I wanted to kind of gauge well, how much of the experience was online compared to how much of it was was in a school, because that's going to look very, very differently for you when, again, you if you do start to look at other jobs and looking at other roles and, and adaptability is absolutely something you can talk about because you've adapted to this situation as we kind of all had so yeah I think that's absolutely brilliant um so Ramesa how about yourself so what is a, a sort of typical working day week like for yourself in the in the council yep so um I am currently working from home mm -hmm. never even seen the office <laughs> um which is a bit of a shame however obviously it is why it is um but a typical working day, um, so we do have flexible hours. So I can start at 8 o'clock, I can start at 9 o'clock. That just depends on me, which is really nice to have that nice work and life balance. So we work on lots of different projects at the same time and no day will be the same. So currently, because of the situation, we'll be working on a lot of COVID response. Um, so we work across the whole council to ensure that we're doing our part to ensure that um, the comms messages are out there, that we're supporting schools and um, care homes to ensure that obviously everybody has the right support. Um, and yeah, so we also have lots and lots of virtual meetings every single day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a nice way to ensure that we're still communicating with our colleagues and that we can still work on different projects, even though it is virtually. Um, lots of checking emails as well, as Hannah was saying. Um, yeah. Brilliant. And like I say, with this kind of uh, adapting to this online, obviously you, you've you had the, the unfortunate uh, situation that you've come into it sort of midway through COVID. So you haven't seen the office yet, but you've been able to kind of get to know colleagues. You kind of understand the work, you've been using the facilities. And again, there's obviously a big shift to sort of digital uh, sort of a digital element to, to working from home now um, so you've had to get used to a lot more of those kind of platforms has that been a, a sort of technical challenge in any sort of way or have you felt that that's been quite easily to kind of to adapt to yeah um, I think it was quite easy to adapt to it mm -hmm. um, obviously being a student you're using your computer your laptop all the time so it was sort of that switch was quite easy to make um, the difficult thing is probably working from home, just so many distractions and you really need to be able to focus and just do your work. So mm -hmm. that that would be the only drawback. However, it is still nice to be able to work from home mm -hmm. um, yeah, and still being able to see your colleagues, even though it is virtually, I see them every single day. Mm -hmm. 
still we still make that effort yeah and it would be very strange when you actually get to meet them in person i imagine uh, yeah. when you get to that stage won't it lovely brilliant thank you very much again it's given me a, a lovely sort of painted picture of what it's like in a, a sort of day-to-day -day for you both uh, in terms of your roles and and again i hope it continues to go well as as things sort of kind of change and move forward over the next few months it sounds absolutely fantastic so moving back into talking a bit more about your sort of university experience um before we do jump on i want to just add uh, a little bit to to the question that was earlier about placements and hannah you might be able to chip in here as well if this is something you've adapted to but when you were looking at your placements from ASA did you use this sort of career service or placement service at DMU or was uh, was a lot of that kind of off your own back? So during second year I used the um, career service quite a lot because I was I had applied for a new job I was in the process so whilst I was in the process of applying for a job um, I used the career service for the applications for help with my CV writing um, and then when I secured an interview I went for a mock interview Mm -hmm. So they asked me lots of different questions based on the job specification and they also talked me through, so for example, talking me through the STAR method and how to answer interview questions based on how employees want you to answer it. Mm -hmm. um, and they were just really, really helpful because I managed to secure that job and I don't think I would have without their help. Okay. Lovely. Thank you very much. I just wanted to just add that a little bit there because it was a, a point that I missed earlier. So that's my fault. But I just wanted to cover that a little bit as well. And Hannah, a quick question for you as well, because we didn't get to touch on it before. You're, I know you're, I'm, I'm aware that you're doing your sort of master's alongside uh, your sort of part time teaching. What's that kind of experience like? And, and can you tell us a bit more about what you do as part of your master's? Really busy. <laughs> Again, um, every, it, there doesn't seem to be enough hours in the day uh, to fit everything in. But yeah, adapting to online learning as well as online teaching um, is is a bit of a weird kind of merge between the two. But mm -hmm. it's nice now that I understand what my lectures are going through. Um, so yeah, with the career service, they actually supported me in writing my personal statement um, because unfortunately I am doing my master's at a different university and I do miss them you very, very much. Um, but yeah, they, they helped me out. And I think the great thing about the career service is that they support you as a graduate. So not only as a student. So as a graduate at the university, you can still go to the career service after graduating um, for their help. And I would had an online meeting with um, one of the advisors and she was really, really helpful mm -hmm. and um, got me my place at, uh, for my master's. Um, yeah, really, really great and useful service. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, so. I think that was kind of the end of the, those sort of questions that I wanted to touch on. A um, couple of things I wanted to point out, and then we have got an additional guest that I'd like to bring in very, very shortly. Um, but uh, as you guys have mentioned, obviously, as a DMU student, um, once you graduate, you actually get access to this careers service that, that both of you have just mentioned. Um, so it's called DMU for Life. It's part of that sort of flagship scheme that we offer. So opportunities include those sort of paid internships that we offer. You've got the sort of networking events, you've got recruitment fairs, you've got access to lots of online resources, which, even after you've graduated, you can still access these. You've still got that sort of communication and you've still got that support, which is brilliant um, for students that do move into the world of work once they graduated. So it's, it's you know, it's, totally normal to kind of not know what you want to do with your degree as we've kind of highlighted with this particular stream and that's why the service is kind of there for students even after that stage um because very much i imagine third year the last thing you're kind of thinking about is what happens next because you're very much focused on the sort of then and there about those kind of projects and the dissertation you're working on so it's really fantastic you've got the opportunity to kind of explore that and get that resource once you finish um so you can find out a little bit more information about that on our website so do head over to the website to find out a little bit more we'll try and pop the link in the comments if you would like to find out a little bit more uh, about the career service and everything like that now before we move on to a couple more questions i'm going to bring in nabila uh, and we're going to quiz nabila about all things uh, dmu as well so good evening nabila hello welcome hi <laughs> Sorry, I'm so late. Gosh, it's been a bit of a crazy day, but I'm happy to be a part of this. Um, nice to see everyone again. <laughs> Hello, that's absolutely fine. Things happen. Um, as we have uh, sort of noticed the last few months, things are a little bit crazy. Um, so Nabila, do you want to quickly just kind of introduce yourself and tell everybody about what it is that you do? 
Yeah, sure. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nabila. I am currently a PhD student at DMU studying cognitive psychology. Um, but before I began my PhD, I also did my undergraduate degree at DMU in single learner psychology. Um, so I did my three years undergrad at DMU and then jumped straight into a PhD after that. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm happy to answer any questions about, you know, what that might be like and what are the options if, if you do want to do that in the future? Yeah, I think I think that's possibly a good place to start. Actually, obviously, you did your um, your sort of psychology degree. Um, you sort of finished that. You went into obviously in the future, once you'd been with us for a few years, you decided on this PhD. What what made you choose that as a as a route once you'd finished your undergrad? The important thing to point out is through the three throughout the three years, I really chopped and changed between what I wanted to do mm -hmm. um, because I I kind of came into the university and I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to progress onto after I graduated, and actually just on the first day I realized I completely misjudged everything and everything I thought I knew about what it was to study at university and then go on to to pursue a career was completely wrong. I think if that's the word, I, I, because I was a first generation university student, I didn't really know what to expect. And I, I feel like a lot of students are in that position. Um, and so I thought, yeah, I want to be an educational psychologist. I love kids. I want to work with kids, but I had never actually worked with any kids. And through uh, my time at the university, I got involved with some volunteering and I realized I absolutely did not enjoy working with kids at all um, and everybody looks at me and thinks like I'm wonderful with kids but I'm really not um, and actually through studying my degree I, I came across um, one of the modules called research methods and um, I realized I really enjoyed the the statistical analysis aspect of it and I really enjoyed interacting with participants and doing all of that kind of stuff that you would do um, in psychology if you studied the course mm -hmm. and so that's what led me to figuring out that I enjoy doing research um, and a PhD is kind of the next step for for someone to take if they are interested in doing research and and maybe pursuing on to become a psychologist because in mm -hmm. order to get the psychologist title you will most likely need to study a master's and then a PhD and then go on from there and so it was kind of exploring all the options through my three years that I, I got to the position that I was where I decided a PhD was what I wanted to do next um, so yeah I, I absolutely had no idea about that before definitely I thought a PhD what I'm not smart enough um, and here we are so um, it's kind of a it's a crazy experience I think the whole thing but mm -hmm. you don't have to know what you want to do off the bat you'll, you'll figure stuff out as and when and there's no direct route into anything anymore I don't think I mean Hannah Remesa do you agree I feel like it's not as straightforward as as they make it out to be Sorry, my connection was awful. What was your question? It just <laughs> when. <laughs> no, I just mean like in terms of career paths, I don't think it's as straightforward as, as we've always thought it was. Mm -hmm. Like you have to study oh, yeah. this to do this and go there. It, there's a whole different route to a whole lot of different things. Um, and psychology is one of those really broad areas which you, where you could really end up anywhere. And I think it's important to remember that um, mm -hmm. if you're not sure what you want to do and you are interested in psychology, you don't have to know just yet. Yeah, absolutely. It was a it was the discussion we were having before you came on the chat, actually, in that it, whatever kind of degree you do, um, if you decide you don't want to do it at the end, that's absolutely fine because you've got so many transferable skills from that degree um, that you can take anywhere else. So, um yeah, like for me, I did criminology. I'm now teaching psychology. So a completely different thing. But um, still, I still learned those skills from my degree at university. And I think Ramesa would would probably agree. Yeah, absolutely. I obviously didn't know where I wanted to go, what career path I wanted to choose. That's why I chose such a broad um, degree. And it just really, really helped me to sort of shape that experience to be able to secure my job. Yeah, I think, again, this has been quite a reoccurring sort of conversation. Well, I say reoccurring, but it's it's reinforced that sort of idea that, you know, going to university, picking that degree subject, it doesn't sort of pigeonhole you into one particular field. And I think all three of you have now kind of mentioned that. And Billy, you've, you've really reinforced that with, you know, you came onto, onto campus, you were like, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm interested in. And you've absolutely just kind of done a U-turn and gone, nope, don't want to do that anymore. This is something completely different. Um, Hannah, I feel like you've kind of gone sort of a, maybe a similar way to where maybe Nabila was thinking of going, because you now obviously work more closely with kids than perhaps you originally envisioned. So you've both kind of gone on 
almost completely separate paths there in, in a similar sort of capacity. So I think that's, an, again, it's just a really nice reinforcement. And I, hopefully that maybe alleviates some of those worries that students might have when they are picking their subjects, that it really doesn't sort of filter you into that one area. You can change, you can sort of change it up based on your own interests. And I think we've all identified that. Um, so another question that I had for, for the other two before you arrived, Nabila, was what is a what a kind of a typical day for somebody in your area doing this sort of PhD, doing this research? What does it kind of look for you? What do you find yourself doing on a, on a typical day? Um, so the, the important thing to remember about PhD is, is independent study. So you it's not necessarily like the nine to five that you think it might be. Um, it does involve a lot of like um, figuring out your own timetable and working out when you enjoy working best. So some people enjoy working late at night and spend the day gardening, cooking, baking, I don't know, things. <laughs> um, so so my typical day kind of starts around uh, 10 o'clock. Um, <laughs> you know i i do kind of like to take it a bit easy in the morning get up have a cup of coffee just relax um and so i find myself doing quite a lot of reading i think that's the big thing that you'll be doing if you do pursue a phd um is you'll be doing a lot of reading and kind of going out there exploring what already exists and just broadening your no knowledge and different things um and i also kind of find myself doing a lot of writing which i write a little bit scrap out write again do you know scribbling out that trying something else and jumping between a lot of different things and it it is really important to kind of be able to to discipline yourself in the way that you're going to make sure you sit down and do some work because i think what i've been told by my supervisors i should be working about 40 hours a week so it's a basically a full-time job so you should be doing work for at least 40 hours a week and that could be anything to reading to just thinking about it or anything like that. So I don't really have a very standard day, um, Ben, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I kind of went in a roundabout way to tell you that. But um, yeah, it, it's it's really truly dependent on you, but you, there are things that you have to do. You just have to figure out how to do them. But mm -hmm. it is a lot of reading and a lot of writing. Um, that That is a PhD. And, and currently that's what my day-to-day -day looks like. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a more practice-based uh, PhD, which I was doing as well, you'd be running experiments. And I think that was probably the best part of my PhD was going in, getting participants in. I believe Hannah was one of my participants at some point. Yeah, mm -hmm. I came in, did my experiment. Did... <laughs> Sorry? I got a lollipop for doing yeah. it. <laughs> I know you have to bribe people to get them to come in and do stuff. But um, th th those can be really fun. I think people enjoy them as well because you're doing like really neat stuff in there. So it, it truly, really depends on what kind of PhD you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it really is it's quite varied what you'll be doing every day. It's not the same thing always. And then you can also manage your time around getting a part time job, doing some other stuff as well. Uh, alongside that which is really important so yeah it's less structured than I think the undergraduate degrees are um, mm -hmm. but it does require a lot of discipline definitely because you are truly responsible for what you have to do every day. Yeah no uh, that's exactly kind of what I was looking for really is, is just to tell everybody about what a PhD is and, and you've summed it up very nicely there is that it is um, very much your kind of own work less so or, or more so it's very much your own work than an undergraduate sorry uh, obviously a master's gives you that little bit more independence than PhD is kind of all the way it's 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 your entirely your own work at that stage and I think that's really important just to kind of give students the option or give them that, that idea as an option in their heads if they are thinking of what they are going to do when they finish we've obviously explored two avenues here with with Hannah and Ramesa and then we've got this sort of third avenue with yourself Nabila uh, looking at potentially what you could do once you finish in terms of study so that's good. Thank you very much. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to a couple more questions because we've only got another sort of 20 minutes or so. Um, starting with who should I pick on next? Ramesa. We've not heard from you for a few minutes. So we'll pick on Ramesa next. Um, so the question I have next is, so what was the most sort of challenging thing about transitioning from being a student into working life? How did you kind of find that transition um, when, when you sort of graduated? I don't think it was that difficult for me, actually, because previously I was working on my dissertation almost 24-7. So actually, it was a bit nicer going into a job because I had those set hours. And that's it. After that, I didn't have to think about work. Work was completely off the radar. So it's very different to university in terms of the work-life balance. And obviously, towards the end of your degree, 
the 100% in there, concentrating all the time, trying to get those 10,000 words to actually make sense. Um, and then going into a job, it's a bit more structured, um, a bit nicer in that sense, that you're able to have that structured timetable within those hours. And then after that, what what is work? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I think it does give you that sort of element of structure. Obviously, on the flip side, and we'll come to Nabila in a minute, obviously, on the flip side, Nabila is very much uh, having to create our own sort of uh, timetable and cutoff point there. So it's a different kind of mentality, really, isn't it? Hannah, how about yourself? What was the what was the sort of most challenging thing about your sort of transition from student to work in life? Yeah, well, Nabila would probably agree we're kind of halfway because we're still kind of students, but we're still in the working life part. So kind of halfway. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, I didn't find it too challenging either, um, purely because when you're working on your degree, you're working on a laptop most of the time. And mm. obviously in the current situation, we are now working on a laptop most of the time. So it's not really that different. The only difference I would probably highlight is responsibility. So while you're doing your degree, you're, you're responsible for yourself and your well-being and your studies. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, going into a teaching job, I am now responsible for 20, 30 kids' well-being and education. Um, so that was probably the most daunting thing. Like, they're depending on me for this. Um, so, yeah, but like I said earlier, the transferable skills and communication and all that kind of stuff, teamwork that I learned at DMU did help me with that. Mm -hmm. It's a strange adjustment. Um, but yeah, you'll get there. Um, yeah, but I, I, I do really enjoy working life now. Um, so yeah, it makes all the hard work of my degree worth it. That's brilliant. And then finally, Nabila, I guess you kind of have touched on this a little bit and obviously Hannah's mentioned it as well, but that, I guess that for you, it would be more of a transition from what's the difference between studying on an undergrad to studying in that PhD? What, what's the, the biggest sort of change? I think you've already mentioned it, but yeah I think the biggest change for me was um, the fact that it was so completely unstructured um, w with an undergrad you have a timetable you know when you're expected to turn up you've got a module guide they kind of tell you very clearly what it is, is that's expected of you um, and I think at a master's level it is another step away from having them kind of tell you everything but it is kind of um, structured to an extent but a PhD was very much like okay so what do you want to do great go and do it um and I I didn't know where to start I kind of sat like for I think for a week uh when I first got got started I just um I didn't do anything <laughs> and I was just kind of looking around at the people I went into the common room where all the other PhDs are working and they were all typing furiously and I was like I literally don't know where to start um, and I think that was that was probably the biggest challenge that I had. But what was really great was um, there's a lot of uh, research workshops that go on at the university. So DM, you have all of these things where they they tell you kind of how to plan your PhD, how to start conducting research, how to do a literature review. And I kind of started attending these workshops, which made me feel a bit like, OK, cool. I kind of think I know what I might need to do. Um, and also my supervisor was really great. I think he he kind of. Um, said right go do it but when I didn't know what to do I could always go to him and say right so you told me to do this but I don't know what to do so can you help me and so he he led me along the way as well which was really nice so I just I think it was the support that really made these challenges a lot more easy to overcome um which I think every student out there you you'll overcome the challenges that you that have that you'll experience after you graduate moving on to the next stage no matter what you do where you go there'll always be something but um I think the support at DMU for that was really helpful and mm -hmm. made it a lot easier uh for me lovely thank you very much so really before we get into uh, a last sort of few sort of quick fire questions I guess before we wrap up is what kind of advice would you give to students to help kind of prep themselves not just prep themselves to get to university but when they're at university how do they make the most of that university experience to get them potentially into a similar sort of situation that you guys are in whether that be the PhD whether that be the career what you know what opportunities can they take advantage of what things can they do at DMU that they can take advantage of um, Hannah do you want to start? Yeah, I've said this on so many previous live streams that I've been on before, but my biggest piece of advice with going to university is just say yes. Mm -hmm. Whatever um, 
experiences offered to you whatever um thing you think oh that sounds really fun but I'm not too sure whether I like it or I'm not too sure whether I want to do it just do it um because most of the time you'll end up making a whole lot of amazing friends you'll end up learning things and experiencing things that you've never experienced before um and those are kind of invaluable um when going into the world of work mm-hmm. um, also when starting university um my biggest piece of advice in terms of organization is get a planner mm-hmm. planner plan whatever you're going to do so that you're you don't feel like you're working 24 7 because then you can take your free time and spend them with your new friends or um learn how to cook because that's quite an important skill <laughs> um, that i never learned at university and just lived off frozen food and i regret that um so yeah make sure you're super organized um get a nice planner you know color code if you want make it exciting (laughs) and make sure you're getting involved with all the amazing opportunities that dmu offer whether that's in person or virtually Mm -hmm. lovely thank you very much ramesa what uh what sort of things would you sort of advise students do when they're at university yeah so i'd completely agree with hannah say yes to everything any opportunity that comes along if it's something completely out of your comfort zone just try it you might end up loving it um, and also planner. You need a planner. It's so important. At like secondary school, they give you these free planners and you think, why do I need this? <laughs> and then as, as you grow up, you realize why. Um, so I still use that to this day. Um, whilst I'm working, I still have that planner and it's a skill that I really built up in university. So the first year I struggled a little bit with timings, um, as in that that life balance, I had no social life. Um, And in second yeah, that became a lot easier because I used that planner and I planned everything, all those deadlines, how many words to write, all of that stuff, it's it's the best way to go. Um, And yeah, DMU Global, DMU Local, take advantage of every opportunity that's out there. Yeah, uh, I know, Ramesa, you talked quite a lot about your sort of volunteering experiences before. And obviously that has um, quite nicely with some of the projects that you did with your placements. That's quite nicely sort of transitioned into into the, the working environment, hasn't it? So I would say, obviously, DMU has provided those opportunities and support you there, which is brilliant. So thank you for that. Uh, Nabila, what sort of advice would you give? <laughs> Honestly, the other two have kind of summed it up perfectly. I think it is very much um, saying yes to the opportunities and, and just taking that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Um, because what I found in my experiences is is a lot of the time I didn't want to do something but I just did it and actually led to amazing opportunities that I could never have foreseen Um, like I mean I've ended up in Singapore and Sri Lanka just through one little thing that I said yes to Mm -hmm. and um, it's really worth your while because at the end of the day you are paying to go to university and and you want to make the most of that that experience and that opportunity and and when you go into an interview room they're going to ask you like you know tell me about yourself and I used to struggle a lot with that question because I'd be like, uh, you know, I'm a girl, I study psychology. Um, but getting all of these experience will help you answer that question in a more personal way, in a more um, impressive way, I, th- I think. Is And you want to stand out from the crowd. So all, getting involved in all the extracurriculars, whatever they might be, will really help you develop more uh, of yourself and, and really co- you'll come to understand more of who you are and what you're made of and and like Ramesa said you might enjoy something and also even if you don't enjoy it at least you've learned something new about yourself um if you don't enjoy that great don't do it again move on to something else and and it's really important for you to learn about yourself more through throughout your experiences and so yeah I, I agree completely with what Hannah and Ramesa have said it's really important to get involved in as much as you can where time permits obviously <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And say so some of some of the schemes that we offer normally have uh, obviously been put on hold slightly due to the current ongoing situation. But obviously, once they open up, uh, they are great opportunities to jump onto if you can. Lovely. Thank you very much, everyone. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask the guys just a couple more questions before we wrap up. But as I said at the beginning, if you do have any questions and you want to know a little bit more, um, if you are thinking of sort of applying to DMU or for any of our courses, pop them into the comments and we'll try and do our best to answer them over the course of the next 10 minutes or so. What I'll do very quickly is just do a couple of quick fire questions uh, or in Nabila's case, maybe not so quick fire. Uh, but one question for Nabila, first of all, is uh, can I go into studying a PhD without a master's? 
Okay, this is a very good question. Um, it is possible uh, to go into studying a PhD without a master's, but that really does depend on what area you're planning to go into. So for example, with cognitive psychology, a master's is not entirely necessary. However, if you want to study clinical psychology or counseling psychology, the more kind of very specialized areas where you, you know, you'd be working with people and, and, and becoming you know, like a therapist, etc. You would most likely need to do a master's because you there will be further information that you will need to learn before you can then pursue a PhD. Um, so, depending on what area you want to go into, please do your research and look into what the requirements are. Mm -hmm. Quite often, it is necessary for you to do a master's before your PhD. In some cases, it's not, but that you can speak to your supervisors or or, or someone from you, from the staff around you, and they'll advise you on what you can and can't do in terms of. Um, jumping without a master's to a PhD. Lovely, thank you very much. That was very concise for you, Nabila. Well done. <laughs> um, so the next question I've got here is, uh, I'm applying to study criminology, but this doesn't offer a placement. How can I get experience? Hannah, this might be one for you. Yeah, so uh, yeah, with criminology, it doesn't normally offer a placement, um, but you can go out and find it yourself. You have the support from the careers team. Uh, the HLS careers team are great. Um, and if you just go to them, email them, or when we're in person, go and see them in person and just say, look, I really want experience in this area. Can you help me find something? Um, with me, I got a volunteer placement with Leicestershire Police. Mm -hmm. and I found that by myself. Um, by literally just looking on their website. So if you just search on the internet for placements nearby in a certain area, um, you should be able to find something. But if not, the careers team are there to help you. Amazing. So yeah, I think placements we've talked quite a lot about in this stream, and they are great opportunities if you can find yourself it doesn't even have to be a whole year placement a lot of students will sort of mainly focus on those year-long placements but actually you can find yourself sort of smaller placements to one to two week or even a whole summer placements and they're just great ways of just again getting some of those transferable skills I, can't, I don't think we can emphasize that enough today um in this stream you know the skills that you develop from a whole variety of different areas are absolutely brilliant and as, as Hannah's just said there really good opportunities there just to kind of even just dip your toe into a, an opportunity and go is this for me I want to try this out um so yeah absolutely fantastic and next question that we've got is does having a part-time job whilst studying make you more employable so did anybody here have a part-time job whilst they were studying and want to jump on this one Oh, uh, Ramesa, so do you want to go first? I think we all did. <laughs> yeah, I think you all did, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was working with Leicester City Council um, in a different department. Okay. And I truly believe that it was such a great experience because it was working with mental health. And a lot of that stuff I'd done in my, in my degree, in some of the modules, and I was able to literally pick that information up and apply it to my job. So in that situation, I was really lucky to get something that was um, very similar to my degree and to one of the modules. And I do believe that it makes you more employable. Um, any any experience and opportunities that you take part in can make you employable, even if it's not a paid job, even mm -hmm. just volunteering a couple of hours here and there. Anything that will help you to learn um, is is always great and something that develops you and makes you a good in prospective employer employee absolutely hannah what about yourself yeah so i've mentioned a couple of times on the stream now that i worked as a student ambassador while at university so i worked with dmu for my whole three-year degree and i absolutely do believe that it makes you more employable um obviously because of the transferable skills you make but also i met my best friends through that job um, I met such an amazing group of friends who I still uh, am in touch with now. Um, and also just the, having the part-time job, the financial aspect of it as well. It's a really important life skill to be able to manage your money. Um, that maintenance loan is wonderful, but you'll be surprised how quickly it runs out. Um, especially when you first see it go into your bank in first year and you're like, oh my God, I've got so much money. That goes very fast. Um, mm -hmm. so being able to manage your own finances is a really important skill to have in your life anyway. So if you are able to have a part-time job, I would 100% recommend it. Lovely. And then Nabila, any any final thoughts on that one um, from yourself? Um. 
the short answer to that question is yes, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. And I think what Hannah and Ramesh have has really summed it up what they've said has really summed it up quite perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it helps get you that extra money, which will allow you to be more flexible, but more than that, the transferable skills are definitely invaluable. Lovely, thank you very much. I know you had a similar experience as, as an ambassador as Hannah as well. So I think Hannah quite nicely covered that. Lovely, uh, only a couple of more minutes. I know we've just had a question come through in the comments. Uh, Gapinda has said, uh, dear me for life, but they've also said, what else can I do with criminology? Hannah, I don't know whether you want to, uh, quickly just jump on that is any other thoughts that you've got around criminology yeah so the criminology course has a really broad um broad range of things that you can do the kind of things you learn from it so um people go into the police service they also go um into the probation service as well to be a probation officer mm -hmm. you can also go into social work social care those kind of areas um, you can also go into teaching, um, you can go into the civil service, so working maybe with the Ministry of Justice is a popular one. Um, and then you also can go on to further study like I have. So there's a lot you can do with criminology. And there's actually really, if you think about it, a lot you can do with a lot of degrees at DMU. Um, if you have a chat to your lecturers or um, students that are already on the course, they'll be able to tell you um, what kind of careers that you can go into because you'll be really surprised at the amount of careers that university really opens doors for. Cool yeah and like I say you get a lot of that advice through the career service that we've obviously talked about earlier um, but you'll also like you say get that through tutors which is brilliant so definitely explore criminology have a quick look on our website as well because there are some details on the website that you can find and there is a link in the comments which is just here that link just at the end there will take you over to that part of the website so that you should be able to do a little bit more research and just explore a little bit more around that one last question that we've had through before uh, from the comments before we wrap up i think we'll just tackle that very very quickly um so from cassandra who says what can you do with a health and well-being society degree so asking a little bit more about that do you think you could tackle that remesa yeah absolutely and um, so lots of people go on to further study and um, because it is such a broad degree it opens up so many different opportunities so some people can go into um, psychology and um, teaching. Um, some people have even gone into physician's associate, mm -hmm. which is similar to a doctor, similar to a nurse, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, and also there's obviously, like myself, going into a job and um, different opportunities. Some people have um, gone into the police, um, Leicester City Council, again, teaching. So mm -hmm. there is a wide range of opportunities um, and you'll just learn these as you go along with the different modules what you can do with that amazing thank you very much and th thank you very much for the comments there as well uh, some really really good questions um, but I'm afraid that is all we have got time for uh, this evening uh, so we're going to wrap it up there but thank you so much to uh, Hannah, Ramesa and Nabila for giving some fantastic insights, really painting a picture on what it's like to be uh, a day-to-day -day in all of these different areas. Um, and just again, just to kind of highlight where you can take your degree if you decide to study with us and what potential routes you could take when you graduate. Again, we know this is very, very far off into the future um, for you to start thinking about, but it's really nice to just have these in mind. So when you get a bit closer to that stage, you've got some good ideas of where you could potentially go, or as we've highlighted today, it could lead you into lots and lots and lots of different areas um, you are only as flexible as the skills that you develop whilst you are at university so take full advantage of the opportunities as these guys absolutely did and just try and enjoy your time at university I think is the best advice that we can give so anybody that is uh, applying to uh, or thinking of applying to DMU or applying to university obviously good luck with your applications um, and obviously good luck with um, obviously everything going on uh, at school and college and studies and all sorts of things like that uh, for the future if you are interested in psychology in particular we are running a taster session next week on Wednesday which you will be able to find at the link on the screen just there we'll try and pop that in the comments for you as well so that you can access it if you'd like to find out more about psychology it's a brilliant session to come along to and we'll just explore some of the fields uh, and some of the areas and we'll be doing a few demonstrations and that sort of thing so if you want to find out as more uh, about one particular course that we offer and what routes that could take you down that is one to find out about for all the other courses criminology health and wealth being inside check out the website again the link was in the comments as well you'll be able to explore that a little bit more uh using that link just there and just again 
finding out a bit more about what the university has to offer you. Um, but that is it from us uh, for today, for this evening. If you'd like to find out more as well, actually, jump onto our open day. I should definitely mention that. The next one is on Saturday, the 13th of February, um, and you'll be able to tune into that by going to another link, which we will also pop into the comments. Hope you enjoyed today's session, and thank you again, Hannah, Ramesa, and Nabila. Have a lovely evening, and we will see you in the next live stream. Take care, everyone. Bye.